And the Warrior season did not come to an end Saturday thanks to a huge game six from Clay Thompson. The Splash Brothers scored 41 points, including a playoff record 11 3. Steph Curry wasn't too shabby either, putting up 31 of his own. Stephen A., did Clay Thompson prove he's a better shooter than Steph Curry Saturday? No, he didn't, but he definitely made a case that it's something that should, that should warrant a debate. Uh, this is Clay Thompson. His fifth year in the league, he has shot better than 40% from three-point range his entire career. He has never shot worse than 40% from three-point range in his entire NBA career. Former 11th overall pick in the NBA draft. Uh, this dude is special, no doubt about it, reigning three-point shooting champion. And as a spot-up shooter, when you see him, when he catches fire, he's better than anybody in the game. But on a night-in, night-out basis, even though he's improved tremendously and he's religiously shot better, 46%, you 47% know, from the field over the last two years, and obviously 43% um, and 42% from three-point range, this dude is a marksman extraordinaire. There's no doubt about it. And if you're going to have a debate about the best shooters in the game, it's him, it's Steph Curry, it's J.J. Redick. Those are the guys that you put up in there. I know Kawhi Leonard had a successful year shooting for three-point range, but he ain't on those dudes' level. As marksmen, shoot three-point snipers. These guys are just on another level. And so when I look at it, I'm still going to give the edge to Steph Curry because he does it off the dribble. He does it whether contested mm -hmm. or not. He does a lot of those things. Not to say that, St that Clay Thompson doesn't do it, but he's usually catching and shooting. And obviously... Um, he doesn't have the ball handling skills to shoot off the dribble the way that Steph Curry does. I'd still give Steph Curry a slight edge because he can do it under any circumstances. But if you're talking strictly spotting up or catching and shooting, Klay Thompson takes place second fiddle to no one. It's just that Steph Curry has more of an arsenal because his jump shots can come under a myriad of circumstances, whereas Klay Thompson's three-point shooting comes off of being open, setting up, or catching and shooting off screens. That's the difference between the two. But it's, it's a one and two thing right there, and it's, and it's definitely close. Wouldn't you agree the two best shooters you've ever seen are these two guys? I would pretty much say that, but it's, it's hard for me to ignore that, Skip, because I've seen J.J. Redick uh, shoot this year yeah. as well. And J.J. Redick is no joke. No, and he's, he's he shot a better percentage than these guys as well. So I can't ignore uh, that. But, but these no. two guys appear to the mind's eye, numbers aside, mm -hmm. to my eye, they appear to be the two best shooters that I've seen. I will say this, though. I've got Hall of Famers like Reggie Miller, uh, uh, Ray Allen, and others uh, who would be quick to remind me that even though they have profound respect for Klay Thompson and what he brings to the table, Klay Thompson has Steph Curry. So... When, when they were the number one yeah, options, you're Ray no, Allen, you're Milwaukee, stuff like that. You know, they're, they're the primary focus, which means they're facing elite True. defenders. Fair. They didn't have a Steph Curry to play with. Okay. So that is a good point on a part of a Reggie Miller, for example. It is. Now, back to my answer to this question. I do give Steph still a slight edge, but Clay can get hotter and he can get colder than Steph. Steph has always taken more threes and made a higher consistent percentage of threes than Clay has. But in Clay's case, I'm going to say it again, he scored 37 points in one quarter, and, and he made nine out of nine threes in one quarter. I, that, that's just off the charts. I, I'm not sure that Ray Allen could have done that or Reggie Miller could have done that. I'm not sure. Again. He had Steph to play off of. But in Steph's case, we know what Steph did in one game at Oklahoma City in the regular season. He made 12 threes. That's the record for a regular season game. Now, Clay has the, the playoff record, 11 threes also at Oklahoma City. Poor Oklahoma City. They, they get shot out of their own gym by these, these two guys. But in, in back to Clay, he's got a 37-point quarter. He also has a 27-point quarter, 26 and 22. Well, Steph doesn't do that, although Steph has 11 20-plus quarters, but his high is only 28, 37 to 28. He's, Steph's done it twice. So I, what I'm saying is Clay can get hotter than anyone I've ever seen, including Reggie, including Ray. But in this case, you're right. 
He's just catching and shooting, catching and shooting. Steph can do it off the dribble. He can create his own threes at will when he's healthy, but he's not healthy right now. Yep, I got you. Only two players in NBA history with 200 three-pointers in four straight years. Who are they? Steph and Clay. No surprise there. The San Francisco Chronicle sums it up with the headline, it's winner take all. But which team has more pressure? That is the question next. We'll get into it. If we walk in here and, and, and like it's a funeral, then we won't, we already lost. And uh, nobody walked in like that. You know, we can't feel sorry for ourselves because they aren't going to feel sorry for us. And nobody, whoever's covering the game, fans, you know, nobody's feeling sorry for us. You know, it's just a part of basketball. So guys walked in here real confident. You know, we were upset we lost. But, you know, we let that go. We got to get ready for game seven. That's KD's mentality heading into Game 7. So, Skip, I ask you, which team has more pressure on them tonight? Stephen A. Smith, in my view, the pressure now shifts seismically to the home team tonight at Oracle to win a third straight game against a team that has often dominated the Warriors in stretches of this Western Conference Finals. I think the pressure now shifts to the home team with a chance now to validate the 70, the record 73 win season by getting to the NBA Finals and winning it. And I think that's a lot of pressure. I, I think the pressure is now mostly off the visiting team, which opened, the, the Thunder did, as an eight and a half point underdog in this game. It's now bet down to seven. But my point is, outside Thunder Nation, I don't think people, many people really expect Oklahoma City to win this game, so expectations are lowered. And I'm hearing that Oklahoma City is actually relieved this game isn't in Oklahoma City because the crowd gets so hyped that it makes it, its home team play a little tight trying to get back to an NBA final. So well, I think they have a better chance, they think, at Oracle tonight where they can kind of relax and well, just Skip, let it flow. I need, I need to ask you a question. What's your definition of pressure? Are you talking about just as it pertains to who wins this game or not, or the ramifications of who loses? I'm just doing this game tonight. Which team will feel the most pressure? I think the home team will. Just okay, tonight. all right. I, 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 I agree with that. But for me, okay. it's, it's, I'm embracing it different. If you're talking about who's going to feel the most pressure to win tonight, because in, in the throes of action, sure, it's Golden State. You overcome a 3-1 deficit. You got a yep. game seven on your home floor. You're trying to repeat as champions, validate your 73-9 mm -hmm. season. Fair enough. But I'm looking at it just so you know about who has the stiffest residual ramifications. Who's it going to stay with more if they lose? I think that's Kevin Durant. I don't even think it's Oklahoma City. I think it's Kevin Durant. Think about this. Oh, think about Golden State. We've been wondering, is, is Steph Curry really healthy? Is he going to have to have surgery in yep. the offseason? Is he himself? Blah, 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 right? And we see all of that. And so because of that, you came back from a 3-1 deficit, and you fought and pushed this to a game seven. That's respect. You might end up losing, but as a champion, you didn't go down like suckers. You handled your business. No. You stepped up and embraced the challenge of being champions responded to the moment and pushed it to a game seven. That's entirely different than a superstar approaching free agency, talking about possibly leaving, etc. One of the greatest players in the world, up 3-1 on, ch on the champions, got the endorsement deals and the huge max contract coming, and everybody talking about you. And all of a sudden, game six was on your home floor, and you, in concert with your other superstar, folded like a cheap tent. Yeah. That's what you're holding on to. If game six never happened the way it happened, that would be different. But because of how it went down, how it ended, you have got to respond game seven. If you don't, all we're going to remember is game six. Kevin Durant yeah. has to respond tonight. I believe you. I think he's going to drop 40. But again, it's what are you going to do in those last waning moments 
when the palms get sweaty and the backside gets tight. What's up? That's what we're looking for. Because I know you're going to drop 40. And I think that Russell Westbrook might, might drop a triple-double. I'm not worried about their numbers. I'm worried about where they're going to be when that crowd at the Oracle is roaring and everybody's going crazy and the clock is ticking and your season is on the line. We all see what Steph Curry and Klay Thompson are capable of doing. If they don't do it, okay, you didn't do it this time, but they've already done it yeah, enough times. It. We're okay. wondering about OKC. All right, flip it around. Do the hypothetical. What if Golden State loses a game one and a game seven at home to Oklahoma City and also got treated like suckers, got blown off the floor like suckers in games three and four at Oklahoma City? Will we come in here tomorrow and say the 73 wins were meaningless, empty, to some, like to some degree, To some degree, to some degree, we'll say that. But the problem is Steph Curry got hurt against Houston wasn't fully recovered against Portland. And there were questions that persisted all along. He just negated them and Golden State negated them because like champions do, they left no room for excuses. They owned it and came back and stomached it. But in our heart of hearts, as you alluded to earlier in the show, there are questions about how healthy Steph yeah. Curry is. So in the crevices of our mind, we have that as a backdrop. What possible backdrop does Kevin Durant have? Okay, so are we saying that Golden State does have an excuse if it loses at home tonight, Steph, in his health? To some degree, I'm saying okay. not right now, but in reflecting on a, in the offseason, right. we might say that. We, might. we won't say that about Kevin Durant. Nope. Right. We're not going to say that. We'll leave it there. We asked you guys earlier in the show that if Kevin Durant loses, is he leaving OKC? We'll have your results and react to them when we come back. Stay here.